Anatomically, the talus is a tarsal bone. Biomechanically, it is part of the medial or flexible column. Surgically, it is part of the rear foot. It articulates with the calcaneus, forming the subtalar joint. Articulates with the tibia and the fibula, creating the ankle joint. And articulates with the navicular, creating the talonavicular portion of the mid-tarsal or chopars joint. And finally, the talus has no muscular attachments. This is a left talus. The talus consists of a body, neck, and head. The body of the talus consists of five surfaces. The superior surface, medial surface, inferior surface, lateral surface, and the posterior surface. The superior surface of the body of the talus is referred to as the trochlea, and it is an articular surface for the tibial play fond. It is wider anteriorly than it is posteriorly. It is convex going from anterior to posterior, and it is concave going from medial to lateral. And there is a small triangular articular facet at the posterior lateral portion of the body of the talus for the inferior transverse ligament. And on the right talus, it would be over here. The inferior surface of the body is a posterior articular surface for the calcaneus, forming part of the subtalar joint. And we can see that over here. The medial surface of the body of the talus consists of a superior portion and an inferior portion. The superior portion is called the medial malleolar facet and it is continuous with the trochlea. It is comma shaped, wider anteriorly, and tapers off posteriorly. The inferior aspect of the medial surface of the body is rough for the attachment of ligaments. This is a lateral surface of the body of the talus. It contains a lateral malleolar facet, which is triangular shaped, with the base superior, apex inferior. The facet is concave going from superior to inferior. It is continuous with the trochlea. There are thin strips that are rough for the attachments of ligaments anterior and posterior to the facet. And inferior to the apex, this rough area is called the lateral process of the talus. This is a posterior surface of the body. It is divided into a medial tubercle and a lateral tubercle, separated by a groove that allows passage for the tendon of flexor hallucis longus. There are two clinical notes regarding the lateral tubercle. Number one is that an accessory ossicle located posterior to a lateral tubercle is called an ostrogonum. Also, an enlarged lateral tubercle is called a stytus process. So once again, ostrogonum, stytus process. The neck of the talus is directed anteriorly and medially from the body. It is angulated about 10 to 20 degrees away from the longitudinal axis of the body. The neck also contains numerous nutrient foramina all around that allow for vascular supply. On the inferior surface of the neck, we can see the sulcus tali, which courses anteriorly and laterally into the sinus tarsi. The sulcus tali combines with the calcaneal sulcus to form the tarsal canal. So this right here is a calcaneal sulcus. This would be the sulcus tali. And we can see the tarsal canal. One very important clinical note regarding the neck of the talus is that fractures to the neck often cause avascular necrosis because the vast majority of the vascular supply to the talus enters through these nutrient foramina. The head of the talus articulates with the navicular. On the inferior surface of the head, we have three facets. We have a middle facet that is for articulation with the middle tailor facet of the calcaneus. We have an anterior facet that is for articulation with the anterior tailor facet of the calcaneus. Medially, we have 
a fast adapts for articulation with the spring ligament. We have two clinical notes regarding the head of the talus. Number one is that it sits between the sustentaculum tali and the tuberosity of the navicular. Number two is the angle of Taylor torsion, which is the angle between the longitudinal axis of the head and the transverse plane. And this angle should be about 40 degrees. Now, let's review some of the very important points you should know for the board exams in regards to the talus. Number one is that the trochlea is wider anteriorly than it is posteriorly, and that at the posterior lateral aspect of the trochlea, there is a small triangular articular facet for the inferior transverse ligament. Number two, Know the shapes of the medial malleolar facet and the lateral malleolar facet and know the location of the lateral process of the talus. Number three, be able to distinguish between an ostrogonum and a stytus process and know their relationship to the lateral tubercle. Number four, know that at the inferior surface of the head of the talus there is an articular facet for the spring ligament that is located medially. Number five, know that the neck of the talus is angulated about 10 to 20 degrees medially from the longitudinal axis of the body and that the neck of the talus contains many nutrient foramina which is why a fracture to the neck often causes avascular necrosis. Number six, know the location of the sulcus tali and that it opens into the sinus tarsi traveling anteriorly and laterally. And finally, know that the sulcus tali combines with the calcaneal sulcus to form the tarsal canal.